That's new. Well, hello and welcome to Agile World. You all right, Carl? Yeah, great. We seem to have a third party on this call other than our guests saying that we're allowed. We're now recording. I think it's an upgrade. This is we, a new thing. We get told <laughs> you are now recording. I quite like that. Does she do PA options? <laughs> I think we all need her. <laughs> How have you been doing? What have you been up to, Carl? I, I seem to be a been working which is a very odd experience uh, it's, it's the whole thing of getting money at the end that that well ultimately turns out obviously you, you have to wait seven eight weeks before it is actually in your bank account but it's been an odd experience i mean i'm working for money again and it's a strange thing <laughs> you've not been enjoying the sun. like i so see you've been enjoying the sun. you're red you've got some rosy cheeks going on there <laughs> All right, that's just my Indian makeup. Leave me alone, okay? That's a cultural thing. Um. So we're lucky enough today to have a good friend of ours. We've got Stuart here today. Hello. Hello. Hi, Stuart. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm How delighted to be here. I am delighted to be here. I have to say I've been on holiday for a week. Uh, so uh, this is the first time in a few days that I have been on Zoom, which is which is a delight. I mean, it's a delight to be here with you guys, but you know, it will, it, it feels, it's probably the longest I've been without this during lockdown. So, uh, so yeah, but it's nice to be, nice to be here. Right. So I've got, I've got all my pens. I've got my paper. I'm ready for you. What are we doing? I've got a biro. <laughs> a biro probably suffice because you may wish to take notes, but no, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Today is not a day for you to do any drawing. Today is a bit of a bit of storytelling, but you can also, or you know, draw draw away if you so wish with your biro or your Neuland pen. Um, you know, why why not? Why oh there she God. is. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of canvases over here. I'll just get my paints out. Um, <laughs> My husband blames you. There's more boxes here for my new pen addiction. All right, so I got my four boxes. Why? Why did? Why did? What you said? Pen addiction. I thought that was something from like the Catholic Church. You got a pen addiction? No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay, but between uh, you know when you're training, it, how much of it is teaching and how much of it is inspiring? So if I've inspired you to buy more pens. Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Wonderful. There we go. Well, it will be amazing to hear about your Agile journey. Awesome. Well, on that note, we shall, I shall just share my screen and let's hope that technology is on our side. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, um, and thank you for the introduction, um, I am uh, Stuart Young. Um, I like to, what do I like to class myself as? I'm passionate about many things, but I like to think of myself as a visual storyteller. And um, so um, in, well, uh, to, to kind of keep aligned with that, I thought it would be quite good to maybe illustrate a few um, frames and create a little storyboard and, and talk about my journey to Agile through pictures. Um, so as, as these wonderful people will know, um, when we do talk about visual thinking and using pens and you know upping the stakes between a biro and a Neuland pen um the the thing that i talk about the most is that it's all about visual literacy um and that is you know our way of, of learning and 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 taking on information um and that sort of level of visual literacy the way that we navigate a children's book something that becomes something that we've used since we were young um, is a powerful, a powerful tool to both receive and obtain information, which in essence is, is one of the first things I think, which is the connection between myself and that agile journey is just that, you know, getting everyone on one page and, and telling stories, right? Yeah. So there we go. So there you go. So, um, and so that little shout out to, to visual literacy and, and what it's all about. Um, so, Again, I always say that you don't need to be handy with a Neuland pen um, to be, uh, you know, to, to be uh, uh, passionate about visual thinking. And it's really about sort of uh, how you receive and obtain information. But nonetheless, I did go to art college, um, but that doesn't give me any more right, really, to be telling this story. Um, I did go back to art college back in 1995, believe it or not, feeling old now. Um, no. And I think... <laughs> sure my age and I think back then there was a beautiful thing I think one of the first moments 
where it I look back and it makes connections to where I am right now. Um, and by the way, the, the, the current state right now is I train, I coach, and I'm passionate about all things product innovation, visual thinking and product ownership. But back then, I remember drawing, going to life drawing and doing this wonderful picture, I thought, spending hours on it. And this wonderful tutor would come along with a rubber, rub pretty much everything out in, in a kind of non-aggressive way, but you felt like punching him. Um, and he'd say, change is good. Change is good. So that's the first learning I got um, of the principle of... But, so I, I actually that... did... Um... I actually did life classes as well because I went to art college in 1984 yeah, and were... uh, w one of the things that we did was we did drawing where you where you got your pencil and put it on a one meter stick and then you <sighs> had to draw the life model and the the lesson they taught us was that you don't really control things so like mm. like your change is good like you know it's it's it, you're not really in control you can you can get a facsimile but you can't really copy things what you have to do is express things oh, i love that I was Sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you can just, shut, you can just stop just right there okay <laughs> You used to use the cane as well and, and use your left hand or your right hand and lose a little bit of control to uh, yeah. today. Yeah, absolutely. I think we often probably do all the same sorts of things. But nonetheless, I think that, yeah, absolutely learning. And it was a, a sort of foundational course. But mm -hmm. the next step for me um, was Dundee. So back to, you know, Dundee, City of Discovery. So there's the Discovery boat there for you, just to sort of uh, bring in the, the, the Dundonian bit. Um, and what was really interesting was suddenly I was a, a very small fish in a, in a bigger pond and with lots of um, other illustrators. By this stage, I would decided I wanted to become an illustrator. Um, again, going back to visual literacy, visual storytelling, it was all about about that. And um, I remember some illustrators there being really, really totally top of their game. Right. You know, their style was absolutely unique, yet they weren't getting good grades and I didn't understand why. And that was because they had a fixed mindset and the tutors were like, if you just wanted to have like a style of drawing from day dot, then then how can we teach you? How can you grow? And I was like really shocked by this approach. I was desperate to have this very fixed style, you know, Quentin Blake from from, you know, and, and I think that was, again, a really good bit of learning, which for me personally connects the way I talk about agility and and, and product innovation is just this desire to. And, and your approach, right, in everything we do, the ability to to have a growth mindset and never be fixed with what you do. That's so, um, yeah, you don't realize that when you're looking back, we, we said it, both of us, I think quite a few of us said it in the book, is looking back when you when you in your career, you don't realize how much of it not only links to agility, but it links to your life changes. And, and you've made that link as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I th yeah, I find it really. I think it's also, sorry, carry on. No, go, go, go. go. No, I, just, I, I just think it's really, I think it's really interesting as well is, is you're, you come into these things and you think I'm going to college, I'm going to get knowledge. And actually a lot of people go to college to get validation. Um, they want to be proved to be smart or be proved to be uh, more intelligent or proved to be whatever. And they think that knowledge is something you can own as, as opposed to something you respond to. And this is the difference between school and college. College is about um, using knowledge as a springboard into a next set of understandings. And I think that that was, that I, again, obviously I did, my art college degree and my my tutors were very much of the idea that um, they didn't really care what I came in with they cared about how I evolved and how I changed and, and how I responded to new ideas and new inputs because actually everything is constantly changing and if we don't change with it or at least respond to it then we have nothing new to say this is it. And I think the other thing you touch on is around knowledge and the the egotistical approach to how some people hold knowledge. And I'll come to that later when I talk about my experience of project management 
and and the facade of using buzzwords and looking like you have all the experience but what i when we talk about knowledge and we talk about education very passionate about all the work of sir ken robinson and again another great person who really talks about the difference the that you know we could go down a different tangent here talking about um you know the the, the difference between you know what the, what is classed as cheating in school and what's actually classed outside of work outside of school as collaboration and actually knowledge sharing right the fact that it's not this is the thing is as an individual when you go to university it's about as you say validation but when you come into the workplace there's this beauty of of crossing the line together and i'm totally passionate about that there are things that i cannot do my wife had, an, had a test the other day on pivot tables and different things to some people out there excel they love it for me kryptonite right but yes. we're all different and that, that's the unique thing um so yeah again so these are just little small windows and i think this here right now of all these sort of little boxes that i want to talk about in these frames this is um probably the most significant one and i think having read your book my friend um carl um you've got some experience of working within social care as well up until here it's interesting you say about that kind of individual journey and how you validate knowledge um i work when i left university um i i went straight into working with children with disabilities and introduced to um the different ways the different array of communication that was available um understanding different people's needs and i was fascinated by that and and then i moved it almost felt uh in sort of backwards in time and i'm sure other people that, have, that are listening to this that have worked in social care will know sometimes there's more funding in in schools especially the school i was working was beacon school lots of apple max and all whizzy things all th thanks to hard work and, and awards and things but but when i worked in moved into sort of adult services there's not as much and um there wasn't as much there are speech and language therapists but they're not easily accessible all the time um mm. but nonetheless this window i was there to be a support worker but i slowly moved into this role of um accessible information worker but it was here that i was introduced to um um activity boards and i'm going to be really careful here and say that without being tokenistic for people with more profound and multiple learning disabilities i'm not suggesting that activity boards symbol and picture communication is the way forward but for some of the services we in oxfordshire there was 17 um day services there's lots more integration and changes over, since i've been there um but uh, for some of the services that i went to where people um had more mild learning disabilities and difficulties and um and could advocate their wishes um with, with symbols and pictures there was this was really really powerful and um, this is my first example of a visual board before I knew what Agile was again. But it was, but again, it's not the pictures and the visual thinking bit here, which really resonates with where I am now. It was the fact that it was a team and, and without going, you know, too deep uh, into the iron triangle about what's fixed, etc. What was really interesting back then was that when we think about agility, um, you know, what, what was fixed was, the the time that we had to provide support to people um and and the budget right and working for local authority not a great deal um and then we we flex the scope accordingly but as we all try to do now we we bake in quality so that was the same then it was like what can we do and value value is perceived as keeping people safe but pe keeping people happy and so there's so many things that i can connect with where i am now and then and um I'll, I'll pause there because Carl, it might be nice to hear from you, and then I'll just talk a little bit more about about that milestone. So, so I think it's really interesting the the notion of quality. I think that this for enterprises, the notion of quality is is a recent concept um, in terms of across the board. Now, everyone wants a quality output, and uh, mm. certainly in social services, you're focused around quality of life quality of experience because people actually always respond to context uh, and the moment uh, as no different from an enterprise or from a delivery of software it's all they're all focused in uh, you could say we're all hedonistic we're all focused on what we can get when we can get it uh, and so the quality of that will determine our attitude to everything else around us 
uh, and in terms of customer experience, that's that determines their customer value principles, um, uh, N NPS, all those things. In terms of social work, it relates to uh, do I trust these people to come back again um, and, and to experience again something else that helps me. Um, I think that the, it's a fascinating thing. But one of the things that come up in the last five years is what is the quality of our leadership and do they have the right terms of reference to engage with the business beyond command and control? And that's a, a very interesting question and I'm not going to answer it now. <laughs> well, I'm going to lead into I like that. that. I like that. When you mentioned about the disabilities, I know we spoke about it on the training course and I openly speak about it on multiple few videos with me being dyslexic. And, and the one thing I found and I enjoyed when I was doing the visualization course with you is I am better in learning and visualizing with images, but I also learn in my work. I used to shy away with writing things down because of me being dyslexic. But actually I realized by using visualization tools and you being more visualized actually helps not just me being dyslexic to be able to you know, put the information across, but it's also helped when I've worked with leadership and it's helped when I worked with teams by getting things visualized, these presentations, these images, the arrows, the dots, instead of writing a bulk load of writing, which I'd be nervous about being dyslexic about the spelling and grammar, you know, being able to actually have it visualized helped me. And I've, I've spoken to a few other people who are also dyslexic and they felt the same. Um, and I mentioned to them, if you tried using you know, images, pictures, arrows, lines, you know, small descriptions, bullet points, and it's actually helped them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's nice being interviewed by two people or, or chatting, but we could go in two different listings. Oh, sorry. And what you just said. <laughs> you don't I need to answer my question. Answer both of those things, or I'll just keep flowing. But, but <laughs> listening to what you both said there, there's definitely, I mean, hold on to where we were with visual, with, with, um, uh, the services and and I and I'm actually I'm personally um somebody who's really quite passionate well a lover of the new definition of of, of uh, the new version of the scrum guide and I do do love this idea of of it being that as you say that outcome that the value the the product is the vehicle to deliver that value and we can talk more about quality but but again something um Carl you mentioned there about about sort of um net promoter schools but user experience i think for anyone anyone listening to this i think if you've ever worked with real customers face to face you will always be user you will always be customer driven so that's the first mm -hmm. thing second thing is yeah what you've just touched on there sabina uh, sabrina um uh, you know touches a lot on the my business analyst bit i was going to talk about where customer journey mapping and storyboarding and visual storytelling for business is so, so powerful. In fact, um, a lovely quote here that you touched on there. Steve Denning um, did a wonderful TEDx uh, video from his books around leadership storytelling. And he talks about waking people up out of their um, complacency. So when we talk about a story and we talk about visual literacy and we talk about connecting and learning, as you've just said, it doesn't have to be a nice story it, it can also be a, a story that's going to provoke you to kind of make a change and um another another gentleman who i find quite inspirational uh, a gentleman called kendall haven he wrote uh, a couple of books called story proof and story smart and he says that storytelling is serious business and, and you, any communication the goal is to change people's beliefs behaviors uh, and so forth now these are just what people have said but i find these sort of things really fascinating so i totally agree um the other kind of thing that i wanted to mention is as i was going along in my journey um and i was still working as an accessible information work creating easy read information and things like that my friend tapped me on the shoulder and said you can do this corporately you know graphic recording so i was doing graphic recording with adults with disabilities to synthesize the key messages, to help with participation and engagement. But you could also, you know, my friend was saying, you could also do this more corporately and get loads of money. Um, and I found that it was, again, we talk about value, it, you know, great to have the money, but it wasn't as valuable. It was just like having the chocolate fountain of the wedding. It looked nice from a distance, but no one really wanted it, right? It was, so, so it's uh, really interesting. It's really interesting you bringing that up because that was one of the first kinds of design I did, which was instructional design. 
and I, and I don't know if the construct still exists, okay. but it, it was about, so one of my friends uh, did instructional design for the US Army. And so he wrote uh, one of the rifle manuals and it, it allows the soldiers to take the rifle apart and put it back together again and for it to still work. And, you know, that's a complex thing, but, and you're perhaps not dealing with people who have uh, PhD level thinking. So how do you how do you enable people to deal with complex things uh, in small steps? And that is a really very very useful skill set to have. So designing for the end user without without having a bias of how they'll experience it. Yeah. yeah. No, totally. No, totally. And I, I think I, I think you had that story in your book. I'm sure I read that. Um, <laughs> you probably did. It's an interesting it's... approach from your. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. But yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I guess, I guess to be, you know, making the connections when I was working within social care, the the key, the, there was no talk there at that stage of my in my journey around product innovation or thinking about um, products, but but wholly thinking about creating value and from a sort of that that sort of approach of delivering value and, and successful outcomes, which is keeping people happy and safe. That was the kind of the, the product in itself. Um, but yeah, a bit more on that, I wouldn't mind holding on to because that comes up a little later. But yeah, when it comes to visual thinking anyway, you know, I think some people can think it looks, it, it can just be decorative and it's not around the communication, it's around decoration. And that's where it fails. Uh, and that's where, you know, I don't like the word artistry. I don't like people. And it's great. You've got a lot of the Cablo. I do my own courses. Andy Devell's doing some great stuff. And lots of other people, so many, it's become so popular in the agile space. And that's because it's really about communication. It's around enabling people to communicate, accelerate ideas and, and, and so forth. Um, so, but... so I actually use um, a philosophy around design called functionalism. And okay. that philosophy uh, essentially comes from the Bauhaus. Uh, so uh, 1930s Germany, uh, Walter Gropius and a bunch of other designers came together to challenge how things were done in the world uh, not not to go out and, uh, with placards and say you you're doing it wrong but rather try and find out how to do it right uh, mm -hmm. and they kind of created this place the Bauhaus which was an art college which was the first real what we would now describe as an art college they created modular learning so every university on the planet uses a Bauhaus principle whether they know it or not they created a numbering system to structure information, which is the uh, 1.0, 1.1, and all that sort of stuff. They, that's a Bauhaus thing. Um, and, and But they also had this notion of functional aesthetics, which means that if something looks beautiful, that's great. But if it doesn't actually work, it's a pointless thing. <laughs> so I'm a functionalist, yeah. and that, that's a philosophy I use in my work. You know, it's, it doesn't matter how yeah. great the PowerPoint is. If it doesn't tell you anything <laughs> useful... <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is, I, I think, I mean, look, I, we're bouncing around, but that's the beauty of, you, you know, this sort of thing. But if we if we kind of keep moving back to, to, to the visual element to this. Yeah. Um, for me, um, like a children's book, you know, it, it, it's around communication. And, and I think right there in the middle, when we, we bring this back to agility and balanced teams working together to cross that line or to learn to build um, awesome products or deliver wonderful services, um, you know, it enhances team collaboration. So for me, one of the key things that I talk about is it being process over art. So the output of visuals, and, I, and, it, and I'm, you know, we're, we're going all over in different places here, but trying to connect with, with what you're saying. The 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 um, the art itself, the drawing, is 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 um, a byproduct of the communication that happens with that those knowledge workers. So so you know, I love the work of. Um, Alex Osterwelder when I went on a strategizer course and he got everyone to hold up their favorite designs and then rip them in half you know it's just kind of <laughs> it, it's a part of and and I think that so it's interesting but you know for me I, I think I, what you from what you're saying is 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 the, the visualization is a facilitation of communication yeah, yeah it's it is not the whole communication but what you're doing is you're opening multiple different pathways for people to engage with the conversation yeah. you're trying to have 
absolutely and it and as and and the, as um i you know i used to be i'd i was actually at one of the agile um uh one of the with uh, kevin austin one of the Gla uh, lean scotland conferences and um lean agile and i was it was a few years back and i was outed for talking about right brain left brain and i literally leave it we, we all you know um, we've all said things and you know um and as uh, mike cohen said but i might have been wrong you know i used to always talk about theories right brain left brain but but that's what I love about the beauty of visual literacy. And if anyone's been on any of my courses or listened to any of my talks over the last few years, you'll be bored to death of me talking about it. But it's um, going to schools and doing um, experiments with younger, you know, trying to get them to understand and children's story mapping based on visual literacy. But as you say, it's, it is facilitation, but it's joint facilitation. So, you know, we talk about UX and UI. If you're a balanced team and you're the UX designer, that does not mean you hold the pen. You know, this is the thing, right? So, but I think we've got to be careful that are we drawing for design for an, and you can, you can use these beautiful things for design thinking. In court, well, let's get rid of the jargon. Or are you visualizing to try to get levels of alignment and generate ideas and solve problems? So, and I, I think there's lots of different kinds of reasons. And I think that there, there's different reasons at different times. I mean, the the initial point of, uh, of uh, this kind of engagement is to, elicit a level of freedom in people to share uh, to overcome their natural uh, reserve um, and actually just share what they know and 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 and, and that's quite an un, unusual request in any kind of business circumstance because actually most people hold on to what they know because it's it, it validates them in their work so it's i think so it's it's an interesting uh, but it's a moving target and that's also quite exciting yeah well look i'll keep jumping back to this it's a great uh, but you know I'll, I'll, let's I'll, I'll go back to, to those steps and come back to, yeah, to the vision come back to your but, story yeah, we we, we, hey, we derailed you sorry <laughs> yeah well i like to be user driven so if we talk about those things i'll bring you in but as long as we don't lose people along the way um so without you know there's there's sort of movements and, and survival created me to sort of dodge a few bullets and when I was working on an easy read, um, I was working on accessible information, moved into easy read. And that was around this desire for trying to make more information online, easy read. And interesting, Carl, like, as the stuff that you talk about, one one level of naivety I had back then was the word accessible um, versus usable. And there was a gentleman who worked for the council who was registered blind. And um, I thought I was making a lot of the websites accessible and easy and and perfect and i i went to his house and i was greeted by his dog and he told me where to sit he told me to lift up a keyboard he and then he said and here's one of the pages that are, is meant to be easy read thud then he, he he explained the difference between accessibility and usability and understanding the different so again um a be beautiful a wonderful very hands-on opportunity to learn about the user experience and understanding the needs of, of different people um, but that that moment uh, was when I started working more um, in a program environment and I was introduced to um, project management. I was introduced <laughs> to print oh, two. And, uh, no. I, but the thing is, naively again, having worked for the residents of Oxfordshire frontline with, you know, it, it, I thought, wow, I'm now working in a project environment. So therefore, this is going to be communication is going to be epic. You know, we're going to be communicating brilliantly. We're, we're making decisions. Wonderful. I've never felt so depressed at the time. And I'm not now, I'm not saying that at, at Waterfall doesn't work. I'm not outing Prince 2. It's usually how it's applied. But I felt that was that in my of all my moments, that was huge imposter syndrome you know, creating project plans and Excel spreadsheets and working off PIDs and so, briefs. So the tools uh, are only as good as the culture. There you okay. go. There so you tools, go. Are, tools are dead things. Uh, there's, there's the application, but there's also the attitude to them. If the environment is, it's not my problem and I'm an individual, then no kind of tool will work. Even Ag Agile doesn't change that. What it does is it makes people who are like that more angry. Oh, <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's just true. 
it's true it's it's, it's there's no amount of ball games or lego is going to help people who don't see the world beyond themselves well uh, I, I i agree i think that back then it was really interesting one of my first appraisals i went to i was so trying to i was trying to fit in and i remember uh, one quite a good dude who's a program manager he said Stu, can you do one thing for me and i said what he said stop using big words and I created all, I felt like I needed to fit into this mold of, of making myself sound clever. And, and what's really interesting, so actually going back to Carl, what you said nearly at the beginning of this sort of um, conflab about knowledge and where I am now, I feel so much safer to say to my team what I'm good and bad at or what, you know, and back then it was such a facade. I had sleepless nights and I, I actually felt very dark. I felt very, very upset and very, um, and, and felt very un, unwell because I didn't feel psychologically safe. Um, and I didn't, I'm, I'm not a number cruncher. And again, I'll fail, I'll probably look back at this and I won't ch chop this bit out, but I, when we do think about not right brained and left brained, but when we talk about different preferences of seeing things and like you say, uh, Sabrina, like how you see things, it, you, uh, thank you for sharing. You're talking about visual literacy and dyslexia and how you take information in. I'm a big picture thinker. And so you, the Eureka moment for me was just going back to what you said, which I was introduced to Visio, that I was introduced to um, different things and actually, you know, walking and, and moving Trump sitting, you know, um, I, I, that it, back in the day, there was lots of opportunities to do um, statistical analysis and time, you know, processes and add value stream mapping, which sounds all very boring, but actually for, and I'm not that analytical, but I quite enjoyed understanding like a process how where all the dead where all the waste was in a process under understanding the inefficiencies and understanding that that lean perspective that that you know you know customer satisfaction minus all the waste you know what how can we improve both the viability for a business and the desirability for a customer and there were some interesting things that i did back then where i suddenly felt like i had the confidence to be myself and i would incorporate customer journey mapping, storyboarding, and value stream mapping. And I overlaid that to identify and tell a business story. And there was a financial assessment, which we which we, we mapped. And I did it in an illustrative way and identified that there was 0.005% value add in the process. And that was presented to stakeholders. And they were like, um, I nearly swore then, Dave, but I didn't. So we can still do this. Um, <laughs> They said it wasn't very good. And a lot of people that worked in the process were not highly commended, but I was highly commended for customer satisfaction. And that was a moment for me. And um, and then moving on in that in that direction um, is that around the time of baby P, I don't know if you both remember the baby P incident mm -hmm. where um, mm -hmm. a child suffered 50 injuries over an eight month period. And it was due to a, a failure of lots and lots of different children's care services, NHS and so forth, all having seen the child, but not joining the dots. And yeah. um, and we, at that time, I was sort of, yeah, you, you remember, right? And at the time, I'm sure lots of local authorities were creating what was called multi-agency safeguarding hubs. And my job at that time, because I'd seen that I was good at visualizing truth, again, transparency, um, I was driving around um, and I was um, mapping the as is process for taking safeguarding information and they were all different. And I think that, again, we can connect that with systems thinking, complexity thinking. And we think that how, you know, how can we improve the experience for end users or how can we improve safety? And, um, and again, something you mentioned, Sabrina, Scott McLeod talks about a storyboard being you, if you remove one element of the story. Um, or one pain, it changes the shape of the story. So all of these things for me, like the matrix, it all kind of comes together, right? And, you know, I de overlaying all, all of these things that we, all these tools and techniques to tell a story and to create impactful stories. So, so I think, I think, learning. I think it's really interesting, but it's also, you know, the, 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 so the lean movement was about understanding and changing. Whereas the North Star thinking is is about throwing away and starting again, mm -hmm. and I just I just think there's a there's a real opportunity here to, you know, I, I remember the first bank I went into that and they had physical ledgers, 
and then they said oh look we've got we've now got excel or we now got a, we now got a, a program that does this and i'm going why are you doing that instead of just putting in a database and they just looked at me in horror like are you trying to take away my job and i just think there's a there's a lot of um there's a lot of opportunity in our lives to make things not 10% better, but a thousand or a million percent better, but actually we're very in, in the weeds. Um, Is that we... because, we, as you say earlier, we're focused on people, people that can be very much focused on output, very much traditionally, rather than outcome. And what you yep. just said there, I totally agree. And around this time, there was um, a highway system. It's a highway system called Fix My Street which is really, really quite great. It's, it's national and you can map it. But but I, I remember one, one job I had around this time where I was looking into us, you know, de developing, uh, integrated with a highway system, um, a highways um, fault reporting system. And I, and I actually, not being output driven, don't forget in, in local authority, you've got service counselors as well as service managers. You've got a lot of people to keep happy. Mm -hmm. But actually, as you just said there, the experience, improving the experience for people um, isn't actually to deliver a product. What I learned was, but by the way, did you know that in the UK, when you drive to a county border, you don't drive around it, you drive through it. There's a national fix my street thing we could all integrate with. And, and I, you know, and I had to fight that. That was, you know, less is more simplicity, you know, is the ultimate sophistication. Um, you know, simplicity of maximizing the amount of work not done. So totally yeah. agree with you. But common sense isn't that common. And <laughs> building new things isn't always the answer, right? It's the it's. I, I've, I've I may have to charge you for that reuse of my words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the agile Making manifesto. <laughs> well, Making Leonardo the best Vinci, improvements. There you go. Sorry. Leonardo da Vinci and uh, and the agile manifesto authors might need to. All right. Uh, okay. Well, they're going to charge me. Um, <laughs> carry on. Sorry. No, that's great. So yeah, totally. Uh, you know, but but I totally agree. And it's all those things about learning. And and again, at this stage in my life, we I had been introduced to agile ways of working, but it was very much um, uh, waterfall dressed up as agile. So we were, you know, we were we were working in an agile way, but we were kind of purchasing director directorates from third parties, and the contract was for two years. And as soon as you go live and you say, hey, can we make some changes? They're like, yeah, no problem with cost. So the ability to be nimble and change could be difficult, but lots of really interesting things happen. And I think as a trainer and coach now, I talk a lot about the anti patterns or a lot of the the things that that aren't so good when people are trying to transform to new ways. Um, I've talked about that there, but I just personally, I love I'm a great lover of that, that I love the the definition of a product being a service, a physical product or something more abstract, but that that it is um, a vehicle to deliver value. And so when I talk about the connection I have with adults with disabilities um, and I'm on and I, I'm I feel welcomed to this agile community. I'm not a tech. I'm not technical. And like you say, you know, you've got a lot of technical backgrounds and you guys and I'm 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 not I've worked with lots of um, um, software developers. I've worked in projects both in the in more agile ways of working environments or traditional. But actually, a lot of my experience frontline is working in 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 um, social care. And in fact, now I feel less of an imposter because it's all connected. And I love mm -hmm. what you say. I love this that you one massive, um, you know, um, eureka moment for me is when you're talking about the different types of terminology and jargon which you get frustrated with as well. But when it comes down to it. What we're all trying to do is design for the human experience, but in, we're all we're all on the same page. We're, we're project yep. managers, program managers, product, call it what you're blooming like. Yes. We're all trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I like and, your, um, I love your passion. I've always loved your passion with this, the fact that you can see it. <laughs> and because of your background, even though you say you've not technical, but you've moved into an agile world. You've got that background, which is like the human centric, the human side, which is also extremely important with agility, understanding how people are, their feelings. You know, that is extremely important. You don't have to be technical to be an agilist, you know, but having that human side is important. But also you're highly curious. And I think curiosity is is probably the true impetus in doing amazing work it's not 
there there are there will always i know for certain i you know while i can code there will be a kid in a shed somewhere who's a tenth of my age better at coding than me so i'm not i don't need to own the things but i do i do want to understand and i do want to learn and i, I want to value what people do and that's based around curiosity it's not it's not um it's not an ego thing it's it's a it's a connectivity it's a it's a sense of being part of a greater thing that's also that touches on what you said earlier about knowledge and 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 culture as well in that I often ask people when I'm training, you know, who's the, if you're working with a group of people that, that work together, I said, who's the newest person here? Who's only worked with the company for like a month or so? And they'll show that, you know, Ray of hands say, congratulations, you're not part of the Borg. You know, you're not, every, there's, <laughs> there is a culture, you know, and we won't get into what comes first, but, you know, there's some, and, I, and that you, you mentioned curiosity, but that naivety, and sometimes if you're, and I know that you're saying really about the curiosity of building something because you're curious and that's, that's a beautiful thing. But, but by, by also not having that knowledge, sometimes you're curious and you can ask the, the, the childlike questions, yeah. but why? And that touches actually on something really beautiful that you mentioned there again. Um, and that is that when I'm doing customer journey mapping with groups, I, I like them to be really clear what the, what the process is uh, that they're looking at, you know, from a customer journey point of view. And then I like to get them very clearly all on one page and then split them in half. And I think Sabrina, I did that with you, right? Yeah. Um, we, yeah, and we, what we, what you do is you, you, you have one group that are looking at the as is, and they're looking at all of the constraints and bottlenecks and issues. And they're all the things that are just rubbish in the process. And you get another group or the journey, another group that are, that are blue sky thinking, the ideal state that is going out there and going for it. And I like to explain that as the kind of, you know, you need to have your feet on the ground whilst you reach for the stars, but you mm -hmm. cannot poison each of those groups because you could be that person go like Carl, you could be the the, the knowledgeable. Guy. You can't do, we can't do that here, or or you know, or vice versa. But to get those people isolated, then bring them together to create a two B, which is what ifs, and that connects with the how might we's of design sprints and things like that. That curiosity, how might we do that? And, and that's a beautiful thing. So, and again, it comes back to what I believe is a balanced team. You know, it's about having a group of people that are safe enough to just have those discussions like you two bounce off each other. That's the power. I do like- And um, there we go. go on. No, God, I was gonna say, and you're 100% right, the ability is actually to be open and honest. And I think that's one thing that agility has actually created is people can be open and honest about themselves. People can be open and honest about what they can do, what they can't do, what they're good at and what they're not good at. You know, people can be honest that, you know what, I don't know absolutely everything, but I'm prepared to learn. And, and I think it's also created, you know, constant learners, people that are wanting to constantly learn. Where back in the day, you couldn't go into a job and go, no, I've not done that before. Or I've experienced it, but I've never implemented it. You could never say that back in the day because I'd be like, well, hang on a minute, you should know everything. Now you can actually go, do you know what? I've not experienced it, but I know a group of people or I know what to look for. Let me have a quick look on that. And you can be open about that. Well, so, that's, so that's proof, right, of, a, of whether it is an agile environment because you can go, we've all got post-its and you're a, we've got scrum masters and we've got, a, we've got a visual board and we use Kanban and we talk about things that are, but 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 Sabrina, don't talk because you're you're ready to start. So can you just you know, is it like what do we really mean by agility? Do we talk about all the tools and 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 those things, or are we talking about true agility where there's that level of trust and positive conflict? And that's the difference: the being and doing agile, which I know you guys are all over, right? But yeah. that's that's the that's the the test, right? I think we're all over it, but we're also aware of the fact that we live in chaos because we live with humans and some people have adopted it some people have adopted what they wanted to adopt some people have not adopted it some people are fighting it some people are planning the revolution against it and and i think that that's fine i'm actually fine with that i'm not i, I don't need to make people do anything i need to let them see what they're doing for themselves, for their teams, for their families, for their companies, and let them decide what is the level of engagement they want to give this possibility. It's not my job to enforce, it's my job to uh, expose 
uh, ways of achieving better uh, better outcomes for themselves because there's, there's a lot of personal stuff in it, agile and then and and then also uh, you know to get paid more to have better holidays um, no no it's it, honest <laughs> it's that's it true it's, with us though it links with our roles we're very curious people we are curious people so when we go into companies and do the stuff we do we're curious about why they got there how they got there why do they want to do it but, what do they but, want to do how do they want to do but, it it's, it's, it's curiosity as well but I, yeah, but I, I just genuinely think that that you, know, you go in places and pink the people think they have to protect what they've got, and actually you're going, okay, does it work? You know, are, are you are you getting paid yeah, what you're getting paid ten years ago, or, or or you know what's happening? <laughs> and, and, and I think that that what you're creating here um, with this with the Agile World and the Agile Reflect uh, Conference, which I thought was brilliant. Was that you know we, um, you know you, you guys are talking about the, the way that you would go in and support organisations and totally agree with everything you're saying, but more wholly holistically at the agile community and beyond, is that it should be completely accessible to all and mm -hmm. and it should well when I mean accessible I mean it should be open to all it should be truly inclusive um um but but you know it the funny thing is that whilst when we talk about training and coaching and consulting and supporting people. Um, you always try to create, um, you know, environments that people feel safe to be curious, safe to be safe to ask questions, safe to, uh, to, you know, ask the silly question and so forth. And you've been on my courses, Sabrina, and you know, that's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. But yet you, what you guys did in Agile Reflect is give new people new voices as well, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. And, and that's what's really important because there is no that the, the, the beauty is that everyone has the has a story. And that's what I'm saying here. I'm no different. And I, I'm passionate about drawing, but I'm no different. And that's leaving your ego at the door, right? Is that, you know, still, unfortunately, in so on, on social media, still, there is a lot of, you know, you know, all I'll say here is haters still keep hating. Because for every <laughs> nice like I get, I just have to like, you know, rub my chest and make myself feel, you know, remove any anxiety, but you get like people questioning what you do. And all I say, and I think this is what I feel about the agile community, or when you're in an organization or sharing in a team, is I'm a lifelong learner, as you guys are, I'm a lifelong learner. I just simply choose to share my learning along the way. You're gonna either like it and connect or not. You might go meh, it's up to you, but that's not gonna take my tongue away. And I think that's what this is all about, right? So, so my, my father told me early on that um, not everyone will agree with you. But by not agreeing with you, you're having an impact. I don't agree with you. That's fine. At least I know. I'm, at least I'm get, having an impact. <laughs> no, well, it is true. It is, it is true. And there's this desire. This desire to be liked, isn't there? And and there's a lovely. There's a lady that's a, a CST. Um, done lots of different things with talks and things like that. Kim Brainard and and I, I love that she used to have a, a Twitter strap line, which is I'm, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And that's important too, right? You know, you've got to appreciate that. And I really like that that strength um, to, to sort of think that way. But anyway, I'm nearly at the end of my story, but this so is, this is to great. Sort of say that, <laughs> well, this is to say they, they kind of don't all feel like follow this linear fashion. I sort of into, you know, agile kind of came in whilst I was a business analyst. But I think what's interesting and is that you become more formally introduced, you know, I became a Kanban practitioner, a lean practitioner, a, um, a, 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 a scrum, you know, a, I did my CSM and I'm now on my on my journey to be CST, hopefully, um, if I'm successful, but these are all the things that I'm passionate about, but they don't, all these certifications and frameworks, they don't, they, it doesn't sort of, they just, um, I guess, consolidate the fact that this is the journey I want to be on and actually make me realize, oh, this is the stuff that I believed in before. And that's why you've got the original planet of the apes. I think it was a negative <laughs> connotation when yeah. it was running along the beach desperately. <laughs> yeah, it's not a positive. <laughs> I've twisted it into a positive. But I, but I very much like, you know, if I look back now, and I'm so glad that you guys have now seen my journey, and now it makes sense. But if I look back and think, can I connect where I am now, um, having worked as a product owner and worked as a, part of you know scrum teams and balance teams do i make a connection between that and my time as a business analyst or do i make more of a connection between when i was working in social care and the connection is stronger there so that's what i find fascinating um 
and and the final part really is is where I am right now. Absolutely, you know, I think that when we talk about uh, living living in a in a VUCA a VUCA world, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world, um, COVID has taught us so many things. But it's some a conference I was at once. Uh, I think it experienced Agile conference. Someone said that like COVID is like um, boot camp for Agile. You know, it's like this is an introduction to being able to respond and yeah. and the world that we're living in in this volatile complex world it's 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 a very sad time for a lot of people but but what it's allowed us to do is accelerate the desire to um to be to think about sustainable innovation so you know uh, I'm, I'm you know moving away from thinking about you know design thinking double diamond as linear but but really understanding discovery and delivery understanding um you know the the you know we've got market research that will drive product strategy we've got user user research that will drive um user design and forgetting agile forgetting design thinking forgetting all the all the jargon and all the buzzwords um I, you know what i find really fascinating is that um that kind of the hawthorne effect so as someone as you say who's not technical speaking to a, a gentleman called cheesy who's who's high in the extreme programming community he was very kind. He didn't sort of out me on the stage. Um, Dave Snowden did that instead. But a few years <laughs> back, I was on my first tour. Never, never easy when he. But fair play to him. He was there from beginning to end. But he, yeah, he gave me a bit of a, a bit of a ribbing. But fair play. Uh, you know, I got my name out there on Twitter for all the wrong reasons. But you know, when I was doing my a talk on design thinking, before I was sort of mentioning the the sustainable in, innovation bit and 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 so forth. Um, at that time, um, Cheesy was like saying, you know, the, the, the problem with design thinking is that people know they're being tested, their behaviours change, which is like that Hawthorne effect. And the real innovation doesn't happen up here when we start, you know, creating prototypes and doing ethnographic research. The real innovation happens when we learn from, you know, from the experiences of our users, which is why we need to continuously release the market, why we need to learn it. And this is why the beautiful magic of Goiko Adzik in impact mapping um, combined with Kano or combined with some design thinking tools, combined with visual thinking tools. For me, they're just tools in your toolbox. And, um, and that's, a, that's an, an, a, a quote from Luke Homan. Think of product ownership or product management or product innovation. Tools in your toolbox, not a checklist. And, and that's my, my toolbox and I guess um, storytelling is a pretty powerful uh, tool for that. So I always I always cover those off with ask stupid questions to avoid doing stupid things. Yes. I, I would much rather appear to be stupid than actually be so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that that's yeah. that's an essential thing in in what we do is we are um, willing to lay down our ego to find something that helps our customers. Yeah, yeah, and 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 a product owner, and so I'm very passionate about that that role, that accountability. May I say yeah. now is that that you know this this for, for those of you that will will know um, this is obviously the um, um, IDEO's um, Venn diagram for innovation, but that's not where I think innovation sits. That's where I see product ownership or um, you know sitting because because that's, actually that's... you need to understand. Yeah, sorry, sorry. just uh, that that. that you know you you don't need if you if you are uh, uh, you know and another an interesting debate maybe if you've got if you're um if you're very much kind of connected to the team and you're a senior developer maybe you're not focusing enough or balancing on desirability and viability or being curious enough about what the needs are or you're too aware of the constraints and and, and, cap and you know or maybe you're not aware, aware of the viability from a business perspective so for me you've got to you, that's a balanced approach and that's where the role of product ownership is to kind of continuously bake in time for innovation, which is another chat, you know, it's people like um, Roman Pichler, who will talk a lot about this stuff and understanding, you know, I loved, you know, the, the vision canvas and understanding the desirability, viability and feasibility, which also focuses on outcomes, not pro, you know, not product outputs or product capabilities. So there's lots of stuff here. But it's, yeah, it's got to be well balanced. And that's, that's you know, I suppose that's my message. So, so that symbol is also the symbol that we came up for when we created Wipro Digital. 
and yeah. the the three circles one is technology one is strategy and the other one is design and yeah. the central piece is people brilliant because yeah. it doesn't if if your if your technology and your strategy don't serve people you why are you doing it if your strategy and your design don't serve people why are you doing it and if your design and your technology don't serve people what who are you going to sell it to and it's mm. it's you know it's really understanding the context of what you're trying to achieve because we can all create models to our heart's content but unless we're actually doing something useful with it why why are we doing it no absolutely and i guess models and frameworks um as i mentioned on my the visual thinking courses uh allow us to um you know it puts everyone on one page it helps to structure something it helps to provide structure so that you can embrace diversity of thought but kind of converge on understanding why we're doing what we're doing but i guess yeah that that's that's my message and and so not wholeheartedly on on painting beautiful pictures but but understanding the value and and i guess um my overarching message is that you know or or you know my i guess my elevator pitch if you like is that as a visual storyteller right i'm keen on um, how this can be applied to to the world of agile, where we're trying to generate ideas and solve problems, but and even more so when we think about um, product innovation, the ability to tell stories to bring yourself closer to the customer, but also take people on a compelling story. As far as so, you know, this is what it's all all wrapped up on. Thank there you we go. very I'll much stop. for that. Excellent. Have you got so on occasion you do some? Have you got any talks coming up soon or? Any events that you're going to soon? That is that is nice. You should mention. I'm I'm totally put on the spot. I can't think. I have I'm doing um, a couple of meetups. Um, I'll stop sharing so you can see see everyone now. I'm doing a couple of talks coming up in America and um, different meetup groups. Um, I was going to be doing a talk for um, um, for the Scrum Gathering, but that's been delayed. So I'm not, I might have to resubmit there. Um, and I'll be doing hopefully be doing some um, hosting and some emceeing at the Experience Agile Conference later in the year as well that's absolutely amazing well thank you ever so much for your time it's a joy as always we will be getting you back on um we'll get you we'll get you doing something different maybe so but it's been absolutely amazing i think it's a journey everyone's going to be interested in and um thank you very much for your time thanks thank you thank you bye Right, so I can't stop the recording. So Carl, you're going to have to edit this. <laughs> Stuart, you're going to have to stop the recording. <laughs> I can stop recording. Do you want me to press stop? Yes, please. Oh,